this was a field I was using before. How we established this one was just we dug, you know, just jembe a hole and then we put um, cuttings. We put cuttings and, and planted them. So this is, is very above the ground and it's very susceptible to dry weather. The, the mean there's no rain, there's literally no napier here. You can even tell it's it's light green. Yeah, this yellowing and all the funny funny things you are seeing here already are telling you there's nutritional problems with this napier. So even if you cut it at one meter, recommended one meter height, you don't get the full nutrients that napier should be able to provide if it's properly grown. So there are different ways to plant it. This at that time we uh, planted because we thought we knew very well and uh, remember there was the land I was given to utilize so I, I thought that was a quicker way of doing it because we'll see up ahead a more intensive way of doing it and in my opinion a more proper way of growing napier grass. Okay so the, the napier fields go that way and amazingly all this napier could not feed 14 cows. So I, I had issues. Then uh, like if you see here, I mean, <laughs> even where do you put manure first of all? You, you want to give this uh, plant here nutrients, where do you put it? Okay, so th there are those things which you do when at the beginning, especially where I was very keen on setting up, set up properly. Because these become problems later on, okay? The, 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 the plant itself just splits and grows. But where is it growing to? Where is it getting nutrients from and things like those? So you end up finding your heart is growing, your ability to give them good fodder is also diminishing. So these are some of the mistakes I made and I paid dearly for some of these mistakes. Then... Uh, I just wanted to point out something extra about intercropping um, napier grass and desmodium. The purpose for that is because napier doesn't have a lot of protein by the, the way the, the physiology of the plant is. When you intercrop with, with uh, napier grass with desmodium, like you can see here, it just starts to creep on its own. And um, it, it kind of like establishes together as the napier grass is spreading, so does the desmodium spread. The beauty about that is that when you do a cut this way, that what you're picking up there, you tend to get the nutrients from the napier grass and from the desmodium. Desmodium is a creeper, so it will tend to climb up onto the napier grass and doesn't take much space and gives you extra protein, especially plant protein, which, and we all know protein is very expensive. So if you can save costs on protein, it becomes fantastic. Okay, so one of the things to do is, is to intercrop napier and desmodium. I'll look for somewhere where I can show you where that's much, much clearer. So if, if, if um, I think the camera can show down here. So you can, you can see the desmodium there. And you, as I said, it's a creeper. So it just tends to spread out. And it will grow together with the napier and not affect the napier itself. And when you do the cut, so imagine if this is fully grown and the desmodium has, has established itself well. When you do the cut that way, you get to cut and carry napier together with desmodium. And when you look at the total profile of that cut itself, there is much more protein than if it was napier grass by itself. So... um so here you have a much, much better example of desmodium fully growing with the napier grass in between it. All this in the middle here, this is all desmodium. And it, it has grown from that side coming this way, all by itself just growing that way. And you, you, you find like there where it is very dense, you'll be able to get a lot more protein from... Um, uh, that particular maybe square feet, a couple of square feet of, of, of uh, space there. So desmodium also is a nitrogen fixer. So it fixes nitrogen for the napier grass itself as well, which is an extra 
benefit uh, you get from desmodium other than protein itself. So you find much healthier soil when you have issues of drought and things like those, not very much affected and, and because the ground is covered so there's less moisture loss.